Hello and, and welcome, welcome to the Connecting Creatives Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Connecting Creatives Podcast. Um, so we are all self-isolating today as we always are, but we're all separate um, due to circumstances. But my name's Jess. Um, and yeah, I'm founder of Connecting Creatives. This is, George is the one in the flat cap. He's like the editor. And we're speaking to Liam today. Um, so Liam, we spoke to two years ago, we worked out, which is just absolutely mental. I totally did not realize that I've been doing this for two years. Um, um, and yeah, we're just gonna kind of like catch up um, ask him our like fab five questions that we do and then do some catch up questions and then we've got some games at the end which is fun um, so Liam fab five questions first question if you were an animal what would you be oh um has to be a lion needs to be a, I'm a Leo so it would have to be a lion yes 100%. God, you say you're a lion as well don't you but I think yeah. you're more of a puppy dog um, as I'd be a Jack Russ if I was, because I'd be face off. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I think you should mention the birds, just in case. Yeah, just so as an FYI, I am going to have to get one of them out, because he's, he's starting to pet my leg. So I've recently adopted some birds. Right, okay. And I've got two jackdaws and a magpie. Uh, the jackdaws are quite noisy when they want to go off, but my magpie's at the age now where he wants to just explore everything. So he's he's getting a bit antsy in the in the box next to me. Here. Oh wait, let him run free. Come on, mate. That oh, boy. <laughs> he probably he's called Dalboy. He's called Dalboy. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I'll tell you. There's nothing like having a bird on your shoulder when you're doing a when you're doing a podcast. We did him. Um, we did a meeting yesterday with him on the show. That, but no, I've got two jackdaws and they're, they're really noisy, so we have to keep them covered up when we record. Yeah, them. don't get them out. Oh. I mean, I love them, but they're annoying as fuck, so don't get them out. <laughs> they are. They're, um, great. they're just so loud. Yeah. Right, second question. Which friend's character are you most like? Joey. Um, <laughs> that's easy. I was writing that question down and I was like, this, I already know the answer to this question. 100% Joey. Yeah. Um, Third question What would you save from a burning building? And the burning building is your house. And you can only save one thing. So it'd be right now, what is in my. hmm, Assuming pets and family have been saved. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, oh, that is a good one. Probably. Uh, that's a good question. Probably my my sign memorabilia. I don't know, my Mike Tyson sign memorabilia glove, maybe. I, I don't Aww. know. Have you got I, it? Uh, yeah, no, I've got uh, where is it? So I've got where is it? So I've got that one. So I've got that from my uh, with my Ricky hat and then the Tyson on the oh. side, uh, which I got in Vegas. And um, I've got my picture somewhere, but I don't know where that's gone. I did have a picture with with me with him because I cliche met him in Vegas. But yeah, no, I'd probably save. That's terrible art because there's probably a lot more sentimental things I could say. <laughs> no, I think that's cool. That's cool. Um, fourth question: What's the last piece of theatre that you watched? <clears throat> I actually <clears throat> does it count if it's on because the National Theatre obviously yeah. have been. And these things, and I actually watched the um, the Barbershop Chronicles um, last week, and I was but and I wanted to go to that actually the Royal Exchange. I wasn't here, so it was good to see it. Not the same, obviously, but yeah, that was the last that was the last piece of theatre I did I did watch. It was good. Yeah, I watched that as well. I literally watched it last weekend, and I thought it was amazing. Like I'd already heard so many reviews about it, and I don't really like to make an an assumption about something before I've seen it because I find that when people are raving about shows I don't want to go and watch it because yeah. I don't want my opinion to be preconceived 
So yeah. like, I'll go and watch it and usually I won't enjoy it as much as everyone else is raving about it. But with this, I genuinely like thought it was fantastic. Like the, the, the movement bits in the middle, I was just like, yeah, I was yeah, like, the way, yeah. <laughs> and I think with I think with theatre, as you say there, the that's some of the most stuff that you think like, it's so technical. How do they do that? It's all the scene changes, and you think mm -hmm. like the acting just seems to be easy. But that bit, I always think I don't know how how you would do that. I'd I forget. know. It's, it's, it's like easy when you know how. What? It's easy when you know how. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, like. Yeah, it was just so good. Like when they were moving, I was just like, you like you're they were just all so like smooth. Yeah. Yeah, and it was good. Sick. And like the this the themes that they covered, like it was obviously a lot of plays cover those themes, but it was nice coming from like the people that actually suffer with yeah. those issues. Um, yeah. and hearing it from their mouths like it was just so yeah. so good um, final quick question what are you excited for? in life or when this is all over? <laughs> what, what, um, either what? to be honest <laughs> excited for god I would say I don't know I think, I think it would be just to be back for the industry to be back ticking and just to figure out what my next thing is. Not even for acting in life, I think just what my next adventure is or whatnot. It yeah. came quite, like I said, I was in Australia when this lockdown happened, so to come back is slightly weird. So, um, yeah, I think just, just whatever the next adventure is going to be, I think that's what I'm looking forward to. What, what were you doing in Australia? So I went... So I did a I did a play last year in or in September, which ran to November, and then I was like, right, I'm just I wanted to go to Australia for Christmas because it's somewhere I'd never been, mm. and I thought, well, I'll get a visa in case. And then when I was there, I thought, right, I'll stay. I don't have to come home till October because I'm I'm best man at a wedding. So I thought, right, I'll stay till October, and then obviously this happened, and um, came home, and the wedding's been called off anyway. So, uh, yeah. but. I could have stayed, I did try and stay in Australia as long as I could, but you, you're not really a citizen, so you don't really know. I mean, no one knew what, if I would have knew what I know now, probably would have stuck out and stayed there, but you don't know. You're not saying all the are you when, it, when it's going on. You just don't know. Yeah, definitely. And it's like, I don't know. I, I know what you mean. Like, when you're not from that place, you don't know the way, like, People live differently, don't they? So I would, you yeah. You don't know what kind of support you can get there, can yeah. you? Yeah. Over here, that as a citizen, you're entitled, whether you're self-employed or employed, you're entitled to things like universal credit. So you know that yeah. there's something going to happen. There is some support, whether it's shit, which it is, you know, yeah. there it exists. Um, and as a non-citizen, it's, it's a difficult situation. Exactly, yeah. And that's exactly why I mean and if you're on a work visa and you can't work, you can get deported away anyway at some point. So Exactly, yeah. And it was and it was and luckily the mayor of Manchester, Andy Burden, he actually got me home because I didn't have any I didn't have any money or anything. So luckily oh. that I knew friend of a friend. It's a good it's a great story because I was on and yeah, it was just, it was it was a crazy time. But at the time it was so like my mum ringing me in tears when the borders were shut in and it was a it was a scary time at the time. I think that's partly you know how the media handled it. That's another story. But yeah, at the time it was a very um, scary sort of thing. But in reality, when you look back, it's like well, could have probably just stayed there. But yeah, it is what it is. I've got back. I've got myself best shape I've ever been in. So the lockdown has not been too bad. So what can you do? Good. Um, and I, I think that's mental that Andy Burnham got you home. Yeah, he was he was ringing me. So I have a friend that um, is advisor, uh, LBGT advisor, and he's a got an OB, a great man. If you ever listen to his story, he was the first um, openly gay um, person in the RAF. Great, great person, Carl Austin. He's called, and he he knows Andy Burnham well. And when I said, "Look, I'm I don't know what I'm going to do here," at least just to know the the, the answers and see if there's anything and he was kind of offended to ring me every night and he said, look, this is what the government are planning to do. This is that, these are your options. 
and I said, right, okay. And and then he got the money together for and gave me this sort of code to get um, a cheat because the flights were all coming up at four thousand pound. It's like yeah. I've got four thousand pound. How am I going to get home? And I had, I already had three cancelled on there, so I've still got three flights that I've still not got the money back for because it's they're all tied up in in and I'll get it back, but it's just all backlogged. So mm. at the time, you know, it just becomes this yeah, and all the money that I had saved up from acting or whatever that's your lifeline, as you know, mm. that's all gone now because I've had to use it to live in a lockdown. So yeah, it's not ideal and it's, but there's no other, what can you do? It's, it's one yeah. of them. Yeah, that is just crazy. Like, wow, wow, what a story. <laughs> I did not expect for you to tell me that this morning. Um, but yeah, like, I'm glad that you're here and you're safe. And yeah, everything's fine. Whereabouts in Manchester are you staying, by the way? Or do you live? I am in I am at my mum's house now, I'm at my family home. I did um I've always just rented and then when I went to Australia my plan was I was just well I was in Australia, I was just gonna rent look at places where I was in Australia and come back, maybe a month to a week, go straight into a flat. But obviously this is it just affects you all. So yeah, the family home at the minute, but with pros, I mean, not probably going to spend this amount of time with my family again. It's been a, like my brother especially, it's been very good. We've had a few barbecues, a few family outings. So yeah, no, it's uh, it's been good. So right now I'm in my uh, like uni uni flat room, which is it's not bad. I've got my guitar in the corner with my golf clubs and my bike um, on the wall. So yeah, it's not uh, not too bad. Nice. Um, you live in Levenshoom, don't you, George? Well, officially, I'm in Burnage, um, but oh. I'm basically living here, yeah. yeah. Oh, so I didn't, I didn't even answer your question, then, Jack. <laughs> well, I am in um, a place called Earlham, George. You know, oh, I, yeah, yeah. I, I do. Um, yeah, that's where I am. So it's a, it's a weird one, because most people don't know where it is, but it's actually, they class it as Salford, which is a bit stupid, because it's a seven-minute drive from Lim. So I don't know how it's in Salford myself, but... Yeah, no, it's it's nice. It's like half farmland, half city, I guess. Nice, nice, like mix. Yeah, um, very much, it's it's very much Jessica, like um, the top end of Standish. Do you know, as you're coming into Standish from the motorway, and you've got all those big houses and everything on the country, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get into the little town. That's yeah. basically what it's like. Cool. Um, well, so we know what's going on, yeah. <laughs> so, like, main questions of our podcast now. Um, so the last time we spoke, you were, I think you were just about to release The Toughest Battle. I can't actually remember. We what... were about to shoot it. We were about yeah. To shoot. Oh, were you about to shoot it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. I know you were, something was just about to happen, I remember. Um, but since obviously you've like put it out now um what has the reaction been like to it it's been yeah couldn't couldn't have asked for better i think um the festival run was was really really good didn't expect i think you learn so much with putting a first whether it's a short film or whatever you learn so much because especially with the festival circuit because i think it's very you couldn't possibly know what festivals it would get into it's very political i think it's very much a case of you know i really for example there was a week particular week where on the monday i found out i didn't get in the manchester film festival which really for me mm. a bit upset about because i thought everything about this is i specifically made it everything manchester i'm very proud of being a working class lad from manchester i love everything about manchester it's you know can't speak about it enough so i made it everything about it where it was shot, the locations, everything, especially of what it was about. So to not get in there, I was really a bit bewildered. But then five days later, you, you find out you've won the LA Film Festival, and it, it's just bizarre. You just don't get, you don't understand how it can get into that, but then not. But that's just the way it is. I've, I've learned that now. Uh, <clears throat> so I think from the festival run, it did well. And then the releasing it online is a bit of a hit and miss because of the lockdown, you don't really know. But I just thought, what's the point? When there was one festival left, might as well put it on your Instagram, put it on YouTube, who, who cares? But the, the, the response for me, didn't really care about the award side of it, but just to hear, like, even if one person, the amount of messages I got, 
from um from people saying you know watch your film and, and it said you know it's made me want to get help and talk about um you know my mental health problems so that that for me is the biggest and all throughout the festival like i did q and a's i did one um in london with uh, louise mincham she did the q and a and we did this and the mat and this person came up to me this woman who her son had committed suicide just this horror and i was in tears and she said you know this film you know really she said the message really was was perfect so I'd, just to hear that for me is is the recognition that i wanted um and as far as the festivals go if you get in them you get in them you don't yeah like i i totally am inspired really by like what you've done um and i think especially because it's that you first produced film as well and you've kind of done that off your own back you've you've helped so many people by putting this film out there um and yeah i just i think like one festival um and it, it kind of shocks me that manchester festival didn't kind of accept your film when the message is so poignant and shocks uh, me Pardon? Shocks me as well. It's not a day goes by where I don't think about it. But yeah, yeah but if you you know the LA Film Festival, like that is insane. That that as an achievement is actually like phenomenal. So wow, that's so good. And yeah, and just I just think what you've done is amazing. So well done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so obviously during lockdown things are different as we've discussed but your film is all about mental welfare particularly for like young men as well which I think is a very underrepresented group in terms of mental health and there definitely needs to be more um promotion of how important it is for everybody including young men um so I think an interesting question is like, what have you been doing during lockdown to aid your mental welfare, I suppose? Yeah, well, definitely can't, you know, you have to be, I've always been honest with, with, my, um, with my battles. I'm not at the level of some people, which I'm very grateful for, but definitely days where I'm like, God, I, I don't know what to do here. And I think for me, I need, <clears throat> I always need routine and I don't, and that doesn't even necessarily, I mean a routine of a job or anything like that it just means and I, yeah I need to go right well at nine I'm doing this and then I'm doing this and I'm doing that and that and as soon as it's six o'clock I don't really care but throughout the day that's what I need to have and, and with this lockdown and, and with anything I just need to for me my exercise is sort of my medicine I've always come from I know I started off boxing from when I was 10 and that's what I thought I was going to do same with MMA so I've always done that. So for me, I just have to exercise. And sometimes maybe I should have a rest or whatever. Like yesterday I did 15K, then played golf. And I just, I just don't want the one to stop. So I, I just have to have a routine, definitely. And it is definitely hard in these, because um, you can't see. And I'm, I'm always one of these people. Because some, some people have depression. They don't really want to speak to anyone. They can sit on their own for hours. Some people, it affects people. I'm the opposite. I need to have a coffee with someone I need to speak I need to just be interacting with people all the time so now that you can't go to your friends for a coffee or you can't go to Starbucks and meet that's a that's definitely a, an issue for me but just been doing the best I can trying to keep saying done done another short film throughout the lockdown as well so that's kept me a bit motivated I guess but it is it's tough it is definitely not easy and I think that um there's a lot of pros to the lockdown and a lot of um, a lot of negatives. I think. Yeah, definitely, and I think that um, that extrovert and introvert thing is really interesting in this situation because I'm definitely an introvert, and I've always said I'm an introvert, and I get my energy off being on my own, essentially. Um, and I actually find social interactions. <laughs> she says this while she's on a podcast, but. Social interactions can be really, really scary for me. And if I if I have a lot of it during the day, it actually drains me quite a lot. Um, and I think that's just normal. That's an introvert life. That's quite normal. 
yeah, I'm the opposite. Yeah. I'm, I'm the extrovert, and it's like for me, mm. that, that is hard, obviously, because I've not got that social element because I'm an extrovert because I'm used to being, you know, outgoing and you know talking to people and stuff like that. So it's very different to me that social interaction because I'm I'm so used to going and getting it, but not having it. It's like, oh. yeah, no, I agree, and I'm like I get my, you know, I'm I'm. It's no secret, I love being the centre of attention. So I like to be, if my power will just rise, if I'm in a circle with people and I'm telling, you know, and maybe I talk too much for sure, but when I'm talking and that's when my power is at its highest and that is what my energy comes from is I'm, I have to be, you know, I don't sleep. I only have about five hours a day. I, I don't, but I, I don't wake up and go, God, I'm so tired. I'm up at seven and I'm doing a run. Like I've, I've always been like that since since I was a kid. So I don't ever have that that low energy, which is a, a gift and a curse again. Mm, yeah, that's that's really interesting actually. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of like this lockdown, in a way for me, I was like, oh, this is a dream. Like I'm kind of being told that I can just stay at home and not interact, but then. I'm kind of now like, oh, but now I really, really want human interaction, which for me is so backwards because I never really feel that. But then I, you've got to think from an extrovert point of view, how difficult this is for people who kind of get their energy off being around other people. And that can really affect your mental welfare as well. So I think that is a point that is really important to be shared yeah. um, and yeah and like reaching out to friends and family and stuff even though you're not interacting at least you you still have people there that like after this lockdown you could go and see yeah i mean it's yeah you said and for us lot you know we're all creative so it's even um you know not just i know there's obviously people in in forget the in our industry but there's still people that are in our boat but for for a creative person as well it's very difficult if you can't even get and that's why i had to do this short film you, there's nothing at the moment and you and the scary thing is i guess you don't really know when it's going to be back so that that's you know you've got that anxiety and all this stuff but yeah it's it's just about taking it each day as it comes i guess yeah 100 percent. um so when the lockdown is over what are you hoping to do either creatively or um just as like a personal thing like what what's the first thing you're going to do when lockdown's over uh hopefully need to find a job as soon as possible uh <laughs> oh, no hopefully my agent is uh is gonna do it's gonna it's gonna do something but uh <laughs> if that happens but yeah i think um well as i said i've, I've been um, doing it, I've been lucky enough to. Uh, I, I wrote, I wrote a short film while I was in the past months before all this happened. That has had to go on the back burner because that's not something that you can film. You know, it's just not going to happen. But about three weeks ago, I did write a lockdown short film, um, and I wanted to do it in American because it's something I wanted to challenge. So. I've man I managed to was lucky enough to uh get a, an actress, uh Cole Bernstein, who um has actually been in Law and Order, Riverdale, she's a she's a great actress. And me and her shot shot this last week on Zoom, did free takes of uh split screen, just me, her, and did these sort of did it in sections. And we're now trying to edit that now. So I think i I'm lucky I've done that because I want to try and get that out there as soon as possible. And then I think when this is over, try and get. But again, we don't know because now it's not going to be as easy to get funding. It. It's just not. It's a, it's going to be different. Maybe for the better, maybe for the worse. I don't know. But um, I think it probably is about yeah, getting being lucky enough to get some kind of acting work. If it's not, so be it. And just try and um, get back to some some normality. I think when it's all when it's all done. Yeah, definitely. Just on that um, funding note, before we finish our questions, did you manage to get funding for my toughest battle? So, so yeah, there's that. Um, and if people listen to this as well, there, there is a. I did a whole um, on Act for TV. I did do a like a two-hour podcast of just talking about the process from start to finish, which which is interesting. If you 
but we did a so we did a crowd fund, but we also got you know definitely was easier because of the subject it was about because you wanted you had char you know you had charities you had companies helping you out and it was just a case of being smart and for example doing product placement because yeah. Apple rival who were a big big boxing uh boxing brand that sponsored you know Annie Joshua all these people they just wanted us to have the bag in the film and they, they give us about three grand or whatever it was it's like yeah all right no worries so it's just just little smart bits like that we managed to do but again that's another story with how much I, that's again something I've learned I did not know how much money it would be to you know I'm getting told we need thousand pounds to feed people and I'm like what what do you mean well there's 25 crulium on a three day shoot what are they going to eat for breakfast lunch and dinner we can't just dominoes and I'm like well okay you know all these things that you just don't realize I mean I did it you know I didn't get paid Brooke Brooke didn't get paid we did it all for free but we need to get paid so and I, and I wanted it to be a fun I wanted people that were working on it to have fun and be paid, you know, properly and, and enjoy it. I didn't want it to be a sort of, you know, no disrespect to a student film, but I wanted it to be a, I didn't want it to be like that. So yeah, the money was, we, we got it and it was just about different companies and getting involved and just being a bit, a bit smarter, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that, I think. Um, oh, sorry. I was just saying, do you not think that, uh, I, was, I was thinking about this today with the, with funding, I think it's going to get harder and easier at the same time. Because I think there's going to be less companies out there to claim funding when this real starts. But I think there's gonna be less funding to go around. Do you know what I mean? So there's gonna be less companies because a lot of companies are going bolstered and are really struggling, so they're going under. So the actual market for people trying to claim funding is gonna be smaller, but the amount of companies that actually give funding, it's gonna go right down. So it's gonna be really difficult over the coming months. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you're gonna see with this, you're going to see an influx. I mean, some maybe not, but, you, you know, the lockdown, if you look at the shows that have come out and stuff, I'm hoping, for example, ITV says, well, let's not spend 100 grand on Gemma Collins' lockdown diaries and let's spend 100 grand on a drama where actually, you know, and I, I don't know Gemma Collins, no disrespect to Gemma Collins. I'm just saying from a creative standpoint of not a personality vacuum. Pump, pump, pumping so yeah, but pumping so much money, you know, you look at normal people, stuff like this is what I want to see the funding for, not not stuff like that. So maybe this will I definitely know companies that I can't name names, but big television companies that have actually gone, Oh my god, well we don't actually need that person. We don't need this person. We actually can do it without doing that and doing this so you are going to see definitely a a big shift um well sadly in, that's happening as well for the technicians for us technicians yeah. bbc at the moment which is a great thing to save people um getting infected they've been training husbands wives kids you know people who live with the presenters so for example gardener's world ronty don and um, his wife's been with his cameraman this past few this past few episodes because yeah. it's like, we don't have to send anyone down there and she can film it all, that's fine. And it's the same with Springwatch. They've got all their family filming it. Um, and I think that's great, but I think eventually they're going to start going, well, your family can film it and stop hiring technicians and stuff. I think it could be a real... It's a, it's, yeah, it's a, it's it's a, a product. The industry in a really weird way. Yeah, and it's like that thing that I comment... It was on Twitter. And um, basically, there was this casting and it was like... Oh, yeah. Um... We're looking for actors, any age, any ethnicity, but you've got to have an iPhone 11 Plus or whatever it is. iPhone 11 Pro XR, the top one. Those yeah, so you've got to have that. Um, and yeah, you can only apply if you have that. And I was, I commented just kind of like, is this not A, segregating actors in terms of their financial backing? Um, and also, is this not, can't, shouldn't you be, if this is a funded thing and you're paying people, shouldn't you be sending out equipment? Um, and then he was like, well, where's the funding for that? And it was kind of like, yeah, but what, what you're doing is asking actors to do the work of a technician or like all this kind of thing, which like is fine. 
but you can't but to, to me you can't segregate people on materialistic items that they have in their in their yeah. house i just think that's like not right um so yeah i think stuff like that in this lockdown is like kind of questionable and we, we should be kind of saying no that isn't right like give the technicians their jobs and <laughs> actors have their jobs kind of thing you, you see it all i mean i don't know if you've seen for actors i think because you've got actors out there that just want to do something as well and i've saw on twitter these people that are doing <clears throat> like the you know like a monologue challenger for example but i saw one similar the other day and it was like you do this monologue but you've got to put 10 pound in and then you've got to like the twitter like the instagram it's like well why the why do i have to do all, all this can't i just do the monologue and and post it why do i have yeah. to like and it's like you can see you know i get what they're doing but at the same time it, it's just to make their company mm. you know we will like this and you can enter it I, I don't i just don't get it but that's that's me yeah i i agree with that um yeah like stuff like that should be about the people who are applying it should be about their work as opposed to boosting a company's statistics essentially um yeah so they're kind of my questions i think we like had a good discussion there and it was really good to kind of catch up George? Oh, sorry. no we did indeed I'm oh right <laughs> i don't know what you said then i was like um yeah george have you got your games for us so we're gonna do um a quick like 10 minutes or so playing some games so the first one is a version of guess who right I will give you a theme. Um, for example, the theme could be um, live action Disney remakes or something as such. And then you are to pick a character from that and Jessica is to guess in the same way you wouldn't guess who, you know, do, are they an animal, are they this, you know what I mean, to find out who that character is. Right. Yeah? Yeah. So we're going to start off with a really simple thing, right? <laughs> we're gonna do like live action Disney films, but it's either got to be Lion King or Jungle Book. Oh right, okay. Right, so Jessica, you're describing. <laughs> Come on. <coughs> then we're gonna switch it up. I haven't seen on. either of those live actions. Yeah, but you've seen the original ones, haven't you? Yeah, I've seen. Of course, I've seen the original <coughs> ones, but like. Right. The them two, yeah. So you need to try and describe a character. You, you have a character. Yeah. That one, one, you just got to pick any character and keep it in your head. Right. Right. And now the your job is to try and guess that character using questions like, are they an animal or... One second. Based on the questions you ask. Right. Okay. So you have one minute. Round one. Oh, my God. Right, okay. Three, two... One, go. Is it me first? Um, are you um, are you an animal? Yes. Are you, um, do you have four legs? <laughs> yes. Do you, um, oh God. Oh no, <laughs> I'm crumbling here. Uh, do you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, I think so. Are you a child or? Yes, yes. Can I answer more than yes and no? No, just yes and no. Yes. Okay, um, are you Simba? No. Um, are you a monkey? No! <laughs> Uh, oh, time is up. Time is oh, up. Like, mine, mine was Nala. Okay, right, right. But like, you, you know, you were close. When you said Simbra, I was like, Yeah, that's fair. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> right, that's you're fair. Are we ready, George? Oh, wait. Right. Mm. Are we ready? Yeah. Yeah. Round two. Time starts, Jessica, you're asking. 
in okay. three, two, one, go. Are you an animal? Yeah. Are you a lion? Yeah. Or a cub? Yeah. Um, I think I am. Are you like a mature lion? Yeah. Have you got... <sighs> Are you like a bad lion, like the evil lion? Yeah. <laughs> Are you Scar? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 18 <laughs> seconds. So Jess oh. is the winner. <laughs> too, too good. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, that's one point to Jessica. Thank right. you, thank you. So now we're going to do it where I'm going to think of one and you two are asking me. Right. You're going to pay attention to each other because each other may give you clues. Right. right. Okay, so I have got my character in my head. Are we ready? Wait, is it is it Lion King in the Jungle Book? Lion King in the Jungle Book again. So, right. Jessica, you've got one point, so you ask first. So you take it in turns. Are you an animal? Oh, hang on a minute. What? Let me press the start button. <laughs> Round three. And go. Are you an animal? Yes. <laughs> Do I oh, have to oh, I thought, I thought you. <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> You do have waste than I do. Okay, sorry, sorry. Can we start I, again? Yeah, yeah. Start again, because now, now, I, now I know. Now I know. Round three again. <laughs> that was right. my Okay. Okay, right. here we go. So, yeah. three, two, one, go. Are you an animal? Yes. Are you a child? No. Um... um are you a lion? Nope. Is there more than one of you in the film? Uh, no. Are you... If, if you met this... Are you, like, ferocious or, like, vicious? No. Oh. But no... Oh. Not in terms of in the film. No, you've asked oh. a question. Are you funny? Yes. Are you um do you in the film do you like itch your back on a tree? No. Time oh. is up. Oh, I thought you were the massive bear. No, I'm not blue. Do you, does anyone have, do you have an do you have an idea? Anyone? Would you a monkey? Because I forget the character's name. Rafi, oh. no. Um, I mine was Pumba. Oh. Yeah. So well, that, 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 that's worked. So right, are we ready? So this is the question round. This is the I. This is from the popular TV game show hosted by Dick and Dom. Are you smarter than a ten year old? Right. So these are questions. Now I'm going to read one from each year. So the whole thing is in the show is they say it's well, it's American concept. So first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, um, and it's questions they ask and they teach kids in those years, and it's how much have we remembered from school? Yeah. yeah. Um, nice and easy. This is first question. Um, the first one to answer gets a point, yeah? Round four. In which country are the famous pyramids of Geyser? Egypt. Egypt. Oh, Jessica, just snuck in first there. So that's something you'll learn. Yeah, what? Yeah, so that's, this is the kind of thing. So we're going to set a clock and we're going to do 30 seconds each. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So just let me get my stopwatch ready. Because I'm woefully unprepared, as always. Jessica, you're going first. Are you ready? Yeah. 
go. So, in which state... Sorry, let's try that again because I can't read English. <laughs> <coughs> Let me try that again because I just completely forgot how to read words then. Round four, again. Okay, so you ready? You start in three, two, one. So, uh, what is the longest river in the world? Mississippi. Uh -uh. On which continent is the country of Greece located? Uh, no, I don't know. Europe? I don't know. Correct. Um, what is the hardest known occurring mineral? Mineral? Uh, oh, 30 seconds. Diamond? Correct. Ah. So have I just done mine? You've done, you got two out of three. Of course I got three. You got the first one wrong. I got Europe. That was the second one. Oh, what was the first one? Longest river in the world. Oh yeah. Amazon, you said Mississippi. Fuck you now. Right, okay. Are we ready, Liam? Yep. And <coughs> go. Um, Earth is located in which galaxy? <laughs> pass, pass. It's got me. Pass. <laughs> so ridiculous. Um, which country is both an island and a continent? You've been there. Australia. Australia, correct. <laughs> what is the largest country in the world? Shit, is it eight? Oh, fuck. Oh, God. Crumbled on this really bad. It's hard, isn't it? It's Russia is the answer. Um, oh, so the first one was the Milky Way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things that these are all questions that without a timer, we know. Yeah, it just the pressure gets there as soon as the pressure. Yeah, that's, that's the element of it. So. Oh. Right. So I can level this. Come on. You uh, can level it. You can't win. <coughs> level. I'm level for pride. Round five. So, the you've got three subjects to pick from. Sorry, no, you haven't. You've got four. You've got history, science, geography, or maths. So, Liam, you can pick your your history for me. History. <coughs> okay. So here's the the danger zone. So you can risk it. You can take two third grade questions and get a point each from. Or you can take a fifth grade question for three points. I've got I've got to go for that because I've got to try and win on it. Uh, Even though it's probably going to be an impossible question, but I have to do it. And then to make it completely random, Jessica, will you give me a number between one and five? Four. Four. Okay. I'm hoping it's going to be when the Battle of Hastings was. Um, <laughs> No, I'll, I'll be honest with you, that's, that's the third grade question. Um, so you've, um, oh. you've done yourself in here. Um, oh, no. <laughs> so, the question is, the modern city of Istanbul... Uh, shall we try that again? The modern day city of Istanbul, Istanbul was known by what name in the 13th century? Oh... Oh, I know this one as well, but it's not coming yeah. out. No, it, I know because they, they, they literally changed the name after the... Oh, fuck. And we have to push you for an answer. Oh, no, it's not there. I'm going to kill myself. The answer is... Constantinople. There we go. The audience have given <laughs> answers. Um, <laughs> So, Jessica, you have won, but either way, your options are history, geography, um, science, or maths. Um, history. No, actually, actually, no, no, no. 
Science and maths. Well, science or maths, there's one or the other. Oh. So do you want science or do you want maths? Maths. Maths, okay. <laughs> so here we go. Round five. Again. This is it. Let's get to maths. Now, would you like you one fifth grade question for three points, or do you want three third grades? Three third grades. Okay. You ready? Yeah. When writing out a fraction, the number above and below the line are called what? I didn't even know this. Uh, division? No, incorrect. They are the numerator and the denominator. Ah. Look at how you learn that in, in year three. In year three. So, if, are you ready? Next question. If a shopping cart contains one apple, two bananas, three oranges, four hot dogs, what percentage of the cart's total content is fruit? Right, can you say that again? One apple, two bananas, three oranges, four hot dogs. He knows. Uh, three oranges, four hot dogs. A sick. A what? A sick. I'll give you that, yeah, it's 60%. I'll give you that, well done, so you got one point. And then finally, how many grams are in a thousand kilograms. Hundred. Incorrect, it's one million. Uh, thank you for playing on Are You Smarter Than a Ten Year Old Today? The answer is no. You're not. What? The answer is no, you're not smarter than a ten year old. No. <laughs> smarter than me though, so you sorry. <laughs> Well, that is me done then. Yay! I've got to go and do bird switch over. That's true. Enjoy. So it's um, been lovely meeting you. You wait, hold on. You're recording us. I am. Yeah. Correct. Um. So just just while we finish, I just want to say thank you to Liam for doing this with us. It was really really good. So thank you so much. Um, and we'll do like a catch up podcast again at some point because it was fun. No and with, just on the last note, just want to say as well, congratulations for the persistence and keep going with the, the podcast. It's always good. And I think, like you say, all this, all these you're doing now, don't just keep doing them because in five years' time, you don't know where. If you know who Joe Rogan is, he just got 200 million from Spotify to switch over because he, and he started his podcast in his bedroom 10 years ago. So just keep, you know, consistent, say what you're doing. You're always putting them out. Consistent, consistent set, and just keep doing them because they're great, and uh, you don't know where these will end up. Thank you, thank you so much, Liam. Thank you. Need that uh, little pep talk. <laughs> no, that's good, honestly. Honest um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah. No problem. You both have a lovely day, and I'll speak to you thank soon. You. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for listening to the Connecting Creatives podcast. If you'd like to know any more about the project, please email us at connectingcreatives at outlook.com. You can follow us on Twitter. Our handle is create underscore connect. And Facebook, our page is Connecting Creatives. We also have our Backstage Bits vlogs where you can go behind the curtain of different productions to see some of the rehearsal footage. As well as backstage features including props, costumes, venues and an interview with the creative team. To see these, please search Connecting Creatives on YouTube which will take you to our channel. Please follow us on all social media to keep up to date with our content. If you or your production would like to feature on the podcast or even one of our Backstage Bits vlogs or you have any other inquiries, please email us at connectingcreatives at outlook.com. Thank, Thank you, you for, for listening. listening.